Hey gang, so we got the new roadmap roundup. Uh, again, they have no new numbers, and at this point, I'm kind of expecting that we won't have them. Uh, this time, I'm planning on doing the usual roadmap roundup, uh, go through the progress or the release view, uh, kind of get my thoughts on that if you've never seen these before, uh, and then a little housekeeping at the end. So if that sounds good, let's get this. All right, so if you've never seen one of these before, basically what I do is I go through the roadmap roundup, kind of give my thoughts on this whole spiel, uh, the things that they're putting up there, just kind of my thoughts on that. Uh, then I go through the release view and back in the day when they actually used this thing, uh, I would talk about the progress tracker and what I thought about these bars going through because it would kind of give us some context, uh, but not a lot, which is one of the reasons why I think they actually dropped this. But that used to be the bulk of this show is talking about the deliverables, but we don't do that anymore. So we are instead just gonna talk about this um, and I'll kind of try to do my usual extracts from that. Uh, one sort of house cleaning thing at the end, but one that I wanted to do in the start of this one was I had quite a few commenters on my ships coming to IAE. Um, I keep doing that Invictus, not IAE that uh, they are dead certain the Polaris is coming. Uh, I am pretty sure it is not for Invictus, uh, but there are people out there, I am willing to fully accept it, that have more connections in CIG than I do. So they might have inside information that I don't. I just don't see it, uh, but I will say up front that there is not been anything that I wish I was more wrong about because if they release the Polaris that fast, that is pretty cool. And it would make sense that it's gonna be coming out sooner than later because it is also a Squadron 42 asset. So it makes sense. That said, it would make me pretty bitter that they worked on the Banu Merchantman for something like two, two and a half years granted through COVID and just decided to dump it at that point, which they're gonna pick it up and do it again, but it's still kind of, there's Banu slavers in Squadron 42, maybe that should have been more of a priority, but here we are. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So this is the roadmap roundup. Uh, I always skip the part at the top. Notable changes for May 1st, 2024. And probably by the time you get this video, it'll be in our hands. The general view that I tend to agree with is that they're probably going to drop uh, 323 to us tomorrow, which would be Thursday when I'm recording this. Uh, the catch with that, this patch is still kind of in a rough state in some ways. Uh, it's not 318 bad. It's playable, but it's got some issues. Uh, I think they just want to get it out the door and then do the hot fix for Invictus um, will, will be their goal. Uh, I'm guessing they want to get the first sale of the year out, which appears to be the Pulse mini bike uh mirai mini bike because it's already in the ptu but anyway uh fully expect the release to be thursday or friday uh might be late friday night but i i expect it to be within the next couple days and it'll be rough but playable Keep your fingers crossed, but here we go. Arena Commander Grav Royale. The team encountered a critical issue with this game mode that no one asked for that requires additional testing. For the time being, we're removing this card from release view until it's resolved. So this one was actually committed. This is a big deal. Uh, not because I was chomping at the bit to get Grav Royale in my hands, but because this is the first time in a long time that they've had a card that was committed that they pulled. So. Um, uh, that's interesting. The following features have passed their final review for Alpha 323.0. Therefore, we are toggling their status to committed. Distribution centers, which were in a rough state the last time I looked, but uh, they might have fixed them. One of the issues with the distribution centers is that uh, a lot like the... Um, 
derelict settlements that you come up on, uh, it would just crash your frames you pulled up on the thing, but that gradually got better over time as they optimized them. They'll do the same with the distribution centers. And I think the last time I was in, it was doing okay on that. Uh, but creating new traversable areas, offering gameplay opportunities in corporate industrial environments. This initial release includes the surface levels of the facilities with underground areas coming in a later update, which is, <laughs> they, they were calling it the new underground Underground and most of the action is underground, but uh, those are big locations if you haven't seen them yet. So uh, as is, they're pretty expansive. Vulcan Graphics API support. I'm going to talk about this one in a second. Converting the Star Citizen render from DirectX 11 to the Vulkan Graphics API. This allows spreading GPU submission work over many CPU cores. It enables many new tech features that were previously unavailable, such as ray tracing. Vulkan is able to be opted into via the options menu with this release, but will eventually fully replace DirectX 11 in the future. So, uh, that thing where you have to opt into it. If you've got multi-cores, uh, I recommend opting into it because a lot of the issues with the frames, when you click that button over, it starts to make a difference. If you got an old rig, it's it's not gonna make much of a difference. You got a newer rig, like last couple of years, uh, definitely at least flip that button and see if it makes a difference. Water simulation, another thing that crashes frames, and rendering improvements. The water in Star Citizen now supports a multi-scale GPU wave simulation to support dynamic reaction to thrusters, aerodynamic wake, explosions, and collisions. This rendering has also been overhauled with improved waves, reflections, refraction, underwater fog, and helmet effects. Uh, so... Yeah, it's, it's looking good. I mean, the only thing we're really missing is swimming at this point and water critters. Volumetric Clouds update. Updating Star Citizen's volumetric cloud technology to improve overall visual quality and performance, including the addition of both volumetric shadows as well as the implementation of ground fog. Uh, yeah, you saw it at uh, CizenCon. It's really cool. Image upscaling. Implementing support for GPU upscaling, including DLSS, FSR, and in-house TSR solution. TSR being the original company that created D&D. Replication layer update. Over the course of 323 patch cycle, the replication layer will be moved off of game servers and set up as its own standalone service. In the short term, this allows for greater server recovery in the event of a crash. This is also a critical next step towards server meshing. So one of the coolest things I saw on this, uh, I was on a very crashy server in the PTU, uh, flying down towards a planet, and the screen just froze and it's clear that the thing crashed and I was waiting for it to pop up with the crash to desktop 30k whatever um, and it just stayed there frozen and I pulled up my phone and started reading my my book and kind of glanced up and about two or three minutes later uh, because I was waiting to submit the bug report two or three minutes later all of a sudden it, it clicked in and started moving again so uh it either moved to a new server or the server recovered. Uh, pretty cool. It did that to me a few times. So they, they were clearly testing it on that server, like crashing the server and seeing if it would replicate over. Uh, very cool stuff. Very cool stuff. That is the thing that takes this from a multiplayer game to a massively multiplayer game, eventually. Uh, and they were dinking around, I think, with 400-person servers for a hot minute, which would be balls, And if you watch this channel for any amount of time, balls isn't a word I just throw around. So let's go ahead and take a look at the release view. So with the release view, if you're not too familiar with it, uh, if it's got this little orange dot there, it's mean they've, it means they've changed something in that section. And then if you see the orange dot by the actual uh, deliverable, it means that's the thing that's changed. So right here you can see locations, committed, distribution centers. They moved it to committed is basically what happened there. New character customizer is awesome. I had a video that kind of previewed 323 like every content creator. So uh, you can watch mine. You 
can watch someone else's. Knock yourself out. AI, Copion, Moroc. Uh, I still have not seen a Moroc. I have seen Copion, so they are pretty cool. I think all these other things, nothing's really changed here. Do, 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 do. This is going to be a pretty short release view. Uh, I wanted to say there's something, ships and vehicles. Vehicle modularity is still tentative, which means the Aegis Retaliator is going to be tentative. Uh, they're not going to roll out the new Retaliator until they roll this one out. And you can still see that it has at least those two turrets. So we'll find out if I was correct on that one. I'm just assuming they're going to drop the number of crew that the Retaliator has. But vehicle modularity still tentative. I'm guessing 323.x Patch, so Invictus would make sense since the tally is part of it. Uh, keep an eye out for that. We do know that the Mirai um, Pulse is coming. I think it's called the Pulse. Uh, so that'll pop on here whenever they release the patch. Uh, I normally would say don't buy the really tiny ships because you can buy them in game with a few minutes of grinding. They are are a chance to buy an LTI token for cheap, but keep in mind that cheap in this game is about the cost of a regular game. So, uh, yeah, I'm not your mom, but if you feel you can spend that money, go for it. Weapon and items, dynamic crosshair. So dynamic crosshairs. Uh, one of the things I was testing was, um, I'm not wearing my headphones right now, but you can kind of see that these guys here, they've got my um, track IR on there. And uh, I run track IR with uh, when I'm doing FPS, because you can do one of those things where you're kind of your guns this way and you can kind of look around. And with the ultra wide screen, you can really tell if someone's sneaking up on you. Uh, and usually in my screen, when you have it set up to this aspect ratio you're seeing here, um, you can't see that I'm I'm actually like clocking 180 degrees around me with that. Uh, so it's very hard to sneak up on me in game, which is nice. But the problem is with the head tracking now and the dynamic crosshair. Oh, wait, this is the dynamic crosshair. I was thinking of the sights, which are also in the game. But dynamic crosshair is fine. That'll actually save me. But the sights, the new sights, uh, are much more realistic as far as the optics go. So like when the aperture or I guess the two lenses go across, it'll black out and you can't actually see through it. And I was having a hell of a time like moving my head around so it was at the right angle uh, so that I could look through the scope um i'm guessing the digital scopes the ones that come with like the gemini guns or the uh a seven the big sniper rifle the big 50 cal sniper rifle um i don't think those will do that so i might just have to switch to those scopes out of necessity uh but i will submit a bug report because i have not submitted one yet that they might need to make that a little more forgiving uh, Cortec Vulcan API, again, flip it on if you haven't already, water simulation, um, clouds, the, these are the things that are going to be crashing it along with the distribution centers, um, and the Vulcan API is what's going to help you the most. Image upscaling, uh, GPU upscaling, uh, replication layer update. And all those are committed, so that we're getting them. Okay, gang, that is it for that. But I wanted to do a little housekeeping. So uh, one of the cool things is... Uh, I had a subscriber last week mention to me that uh, they went, oh, hey, congratulations on going over 1K. And I was kind of like, that's kind of a weird comment on ships or whatever. And realized that they were talking about me going over 1,000 subs, which is kind of cool. I had that for a goal at the end of the year, but it wasn't really something I was tracking. A lot of things I haven't been tracking on there. So thank you to all of you who have subscribed and actually, I don't know, the way that I run this channel has always been less as I'm going to make so much money off of this. This is what I want to do to retire and all that. And more just, I was leaving long winded conversations or comments on other content creators, uh, posts. And I realized, you know, they're not reading those. And now that I've been doing this for a little while, I actually do read those, but that's because my community is relatively small, but I felt like I had enough to say that I should go ahead and say it. And so, I mean, at least a 
thousand of you kind of agreed or at least felt strongly enough to subscribe so that you could see what i said so thank you for that sincerely that's that's kind of nice to know uh and i'm liking the community that i have here uh you might notice that i engage with the community comments a little bit more than most content creators and i kind of see this as my own little reddit i guess you could say where i come up with a topic and sort of say this is what i think about this and then i can engage with people in my community and sort of say yeah you know you brought up something i hadn't thought of or you brought this up which i don't agree with but we can discuss it and i mean of course youtube being youtube of course i got a couple trolls but that was always my goal with this was to kind of make a community so i mean there's at least a thousand out of you out there that uh just have left comments and stuff like that and i appreciate that that's always that's why i'm here that's why i'm doing this like if I ever burn out, I'll stop doing it. But uh, now that I'm here, uh, one more thing I want to say is Bell the Cat is the only member to this one. And he's been, I, I didn't realize that that was a thing on YouTube or I knew it was a thing on YouTube. I just didn't think anyone was a member of my channel. I didn't check that stuff. So Bell the Cat, thank you as the one and only member for, I think, uh, the last three or four months. So thank you for that. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. So don't worry, gang. It's not going to change me. Catch me next time. <laughs>